We begin the current daf, Masech Zbam Metzi, daf Pei Gimel. We begin around two-thirds of the way through, where we begin the seventh parak, parak HaSech HaSapoyilam, which we already discussed in Pesach in the beginning of Masech HaSapoyilam. It's really like the same type of a title, as it's both uh, hiring workers, and Pesach explained already what's the change of terminology of HaSapoyilam, uh, then that of Poyilam, the word Umnin sounds like Eskir Yem and Kaplanas, but uh, this parak of Masech HaSapoyilam, is um, because that's only talking about schiri yoyim, people that are getting hired to like do you know get paid by the hour, paid paid by the day. In contrast, that, that the contract out for the job. But again, it continues on the theme of the previous parak regarding when you hire a worker. entire world. So discussing today's daf are hakol medina. You hire a guy to do the job. Well, what's the what's the uh, you know understanding? Whatever the common custom is. What happens if you want the worker to come early, to stay late? Lazun, uh, how much do you have to feed the guy? You know, you got to give the guy lunch. Regarding what time does he have to go out? Uh, well, it's actually what does it mean going in, going out? But, you know, heading to work, coming out from work. The Gemara brings a mushal uh, regarding this world that it's like the darkness at nighttime and that it's like the daytime. And the story of Lazar Shimon regarding being a police officer. So we begin the current daf, we begin the seventh parak, Hasarich Esapoyilam says the Mishnah, someone hires workers. And he tells them, he wants them to come earlier, wants them to stay later, which Taisus brings from the Ri. This is Tobma where you just hire a guy, Stam, and then after you hired him, you told him, well, I want you to stay late, I want you to come early. But if he made this up beforehand, obviously it would go according to stipulation. This is Tobma that you hired a guy, and then he comes on his job on the first day, and you say, buddy, uh, I need you to be here early, I need you to stay later. So it says the Mishnah, If the place's custom is not to get up early, I mean, not to come early, not to stay late, he's not allowed to let force him, which is going to ask, obviously, why should you be able to force him if that's not the custom of the, of the place? Continues the Mishnah, A place where the custom is to feed, you have to feed. If it's a place where the custom is to serve him relish, so then you stop yes, you have to provide relish. Again, everything is according to the custom um, of that country. The Mishnah brings Maisi Reb Yechim to Memasi, Yashama Labnoi, he said to his son, Tzei, Sarchalon Apoilim, go out and hire for us workers. So Halacha Pasuk Memazainis, he went, he hired workers, and they told him, that, don't worry, we're going to feed you. Shabbat, it's love, when they came to the father, Amalei said to him, Oi vei, b'ni my son, afilam ato oisi lehem kisud deshloim b'shaitoi. Even if you're going to make them a meal, like the way Shlomo Melch was in his height, in his time of when he was reigned as king because he was a king, and it was also, as Gemara tells in Gittin Samaches, also a commoner, that even if you make when he was a huge, when he was a king, very wealthy, you're not going to fill your obligation with them. They're the sons of Avram and Yaakov, which, as Gemara is going to explain, the suit of Avram was greater than that of Shlomo HaMelech. So if you said you're going to feed them, you have to give them like what the Avram have been fed. And 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 Avram Sud is like bigger than Shlomo. Shlomo Sud was were, were crazy big. Rather, until they don't start working yet, where then it's only a commitment of words. And as Rashi brings, words don't have a chusay mana, which the Bach asks. He says, I don't know what he's talking about. We brought that even when you say words, there is mechusay mana. There is a lack of faithfulness. But that's what Rashi says that okay, there's no there's no mechusay mana. Because once they start, you can't back out anymore. Quickly, before they start working, say, go ahead and tell them, uh, yeah, I'm going to feed you, but on condition that you don't have on me, we're just going to give you some bread and beans, but not that he should be expecting, which halacha would require uh, a suda like, like the way Abraham Avinu fed. Let me says, no, he didn't have to say, because I called him in, everything goes according to the custom of the country, and obviously the, the common custom is not to give more than just basic food, and therefore, that there would be no necessity of stipulating this to avoid the problem. Now, the Gemara asks on the ratio, which we said that um, if he tells him to come early or stay late, if that's not the custom, he can't force him. So, Gemara says, obviously, why should we be able to force them? It says, Gemara, lo, you know, tzrich, it's necessary. Why? The Tafalu Agrayu, where he added on to their payment, their paycheck was more than the regular workers. Now, what would you say? Amal, he could tell them how did I feel? Why am I giving you more on your paycheck? Because I, my intention was that you guys should come early and stay late. That's what the mission is teaching us. No, they could tell him, no, 
I did tough Islam, this day you're paying us more. Is that we're going to do a good job for you, but not because we're going to stay any longer. It's quality, not the quantity. And uh, therefore, that's what the Mechidus of Mishnah is that you can't force them to stay late and to come early. Now, related to coming early and staying late, I'm a shlokesh, so as you continue to Medbeis, Hail a worker, Bechnisasai. When he comes, so this is the way Rashi explains, when he comes into the back into the city, back home, is Mishaloi. So he has to give up from his own to the employer, meaning he's got to stay late by him. And Biyitziasa, when he's going out to work in the morning, that's Michel Balabais. That's on the expense of the employer, meaning he doesn't have to leave early, rather only with sunrise. Chenema, like it says, a pasuk tell him, Tizrach Hashemesh, when the sun shines, ye safen. Then the wild animals gather together, because the pasuk previously said, Tashas Cheshach Behi Loilo, that there was darkness was placed and it was nighttime. And then all the wild animals of the forest come out. When the sun comes out, oh, then they gather back into their hiding places. Then to their abodes, that's where they lay down. And then the Pasuk says, Only after only after nets, then the person goes out to his work. And it says, Going out to work. Then, and his work is at the Arev, up until it's evening, meaning up until that it gets dark. Well, that's how that's how uh, Rashi Taisus Kasses also. It seems to be a backwards order. It's first told about coming back home before he goes out to work. It says Taisus, yeah, you do find that sometimes that it's selling that Taisus does bring a different interpretation too. Um, but Taisus explains that the reason why is that when he goes home is for his own needs. So therefore, that's why that's on his own expense, meaning he has to wait till it gets dark. When he's going to work, that's uh, for that's on the employer's time because that's for the employer's needs. So therefore, that although really um, he should be he should be there at nets, but since that's for the employer, so that's that that that's on the um, that's on the employer's uh, time. There have been says something differently back upon them. This is related to what we said before about coming early and staying late. So that we're saying that uh, when he's heading back home. That's for his own, that you can't take off from, that's that, uh, from, the, uh, from the employer. But when you're going to work, that's considered as part of your work, and therefore you don't have to leave before that. Uh, that could be part of, uh, of, the, of the work time. So then the Gemara says, uh, obvious question, but why didn't you just see what is the common uh, custom in town? And like you said, what do you need Rish Lakish's teaching for? So on that says the Gemara, Be'ir Chadasha. We're talking about with a new city where they have not yet established a custom. So the Gemara, okay, but let's let's see where they come from. Are they Galatianas? Are they where are they coming from? That that that, that, that wherever custom is from. So the Gemara, the Menakutoi, where they gather from many different places. There are places that they do come early. There are places that stay late, and therefore you can't rely on. But on what's the biblical narrative, which the pasuk can tell them. But you buy him if you want to say another pshat. Is the Amalu, he said to them, that Grisuli, Kapal Daraisa, I'm hiring you the way the biblical worker would be, which is based on the Pasuk Atilim, and that would tell us that um, he has to uh, only uh, leave once it's already nets, and, but he has to stay all the way uh, till it's nighttime. Yimar brings the same Pasuk and now discuss it more Nagadic in more allegorical terminology. Darash Abzeira. Vamala Samzeira is Tani Rabbi Yisabi Torah Braisa. The passage that we brought up, Terzach Hashemesh, before that, right before that, it says, Tashas Chayshach Vihiloilo, he made darkness and it was nighttime. We say this, we know this, Pasuket Telem, we say this, that all the wild animals of the forest come out. So, what is it referring to? Tashas Chayshach Vihiloilo, Hashem makes darkness and it's nighttime. Zehoil Mazeh, this refers to this world, which is compared to the night. All the wild animals of the forest, they go out. This refers to the wicked that, uh, that, that they have permission to go with their wickedness and they don't get punished. Which are similar to a wild animal in the forest. It says the sun will shine and they'll gather in. And to their abode, they're going to lay down. What's this referring to? The sun's going to shine. That means in the world to come. Let's that means for the righteous. 
Yeah, safe and they'll gather, it means Rashaim, that's the wickedly Gehenim to Gehenim. But my noisem Yabatsun, and to their abode, they're gonna lay down, meaning it's it sounds like in the plural that each one has its own. That's the referring to the tzaddikim, because in the Khokaltik with Tzadik, you don't have any that every single righteous person, Sha'ilum Madul Fi Khmoida doesn't have a, a palace according to his own dignity. Everyone has their own place that's distinct for him in Ulam Habba. Pasik says, Yitze Adm Lafa Allah. Man goes out to his work, which means the righteous will go out to receive the reward. And he, he works all the way till the evening. He refers to someone that he completed his work all the way till the evening, meaning till the day that he died. That's the type of person that receives the reward. Remember brings a story uh, related to this passage, which was, uh, he met this guy that was appointed by the king, the Kotafas Gambi that was catching the thieves, he was he was a detective and he was catching the thieves. Somebody said to the detective, Hey how exactly can you understand their um, uh, their psychology? Aren't they compared to the wild animals which they hide during the daytime in their lairs? Like I said in the past, we just brought before, that it's only at nighttime that the wild animals come out. And then during the daytime, they're, 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 they're in their lairs, they're hiding. And therefore, how could you find them when you were looking now during the daytime? Or you could tell me there's some say, my high crow come, they put them a different posse and tell them, Yer of Bamister, they hide uh, in their, they, 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 they wait in their hiding places, Ka'ari Basuka, like a like lion in his hut. So it says, Dilma, maybe these, that chocolate that you're taking as thieves, maybe they're really tzaddikim, maybe they're really innocent. Vishavakis Rashin, you're actually leaving. Uh, the, 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 the wicked ones because it's very hard to, to really find who's, who they are because they're, they're very sneaky like these wild animals that they're hiding during the daytime. The Malay says, Maya, what should I do? Harmon the Malku. But this is a, a command of the king. I got to catch somebody. So it is what it is. So Amay says, Come, I'm going to teach you how to do it. He was the, from the first of forensics, how to be able to figure out who is the real thief. He says, It says, Come, when it's four hours, into the morning, into the eatery, which is a time of a meal where everyone comes into the stores and they eat their, their, uh, their brunch. If you come into the eatery and you see a guy drinking wine, he's holding a cup of wine in his hand and he's dozing off. So that's a guy that you got to make the eyes on. He's a guy you got to look at and ask about him. If he's a Talmud Chacham and he's dozing off, I'll tell you why. Because he got up early fatugs, early in the nighttime, and therefore he's already dozing off, already, you know, when it comes to brunch time, he's got to get that extra strong coffee to keep on going for the second half of first Seder. If he's a worker, meaning a a guy who gets a day laborer, he's also got up early to do his work, and uh, he's tired. Now, if it's a craftsman that works during the nighttime, so I'll tell you the do did did, which that's the targum of a Yerakos Pache, uh, which is Vrididu, which means that they would uh, make these uh, threads of copper and of iron. Uh, they would stretch out like plates of copper and iron to make threads out of it, which they work during the nighttime because since they they um, they draw with their their tools uh, through these small holes, one smaller than the other one. And therefore, the, the, you don't really hear anything at nighttime. So even if you didn't hear like a banging of a, of a hammer in his house at nighttime, he's telling him you can't catch such a guy. Maybe he's a guy that's redu de redid. Maybe he's a guy who does this very delicate uh, work and um, could be he was working. But if he's not a craftsman and he's not a guy that's a day laborer, then Ganabahu. Then he's a thief. That's why he's sleeping because he's up all night. Where he's laying in ambush for the passerbys. Or he's digging into people's houses. And Vitav say, and catch that guy, that guy's your man. So Shtamea Milsa Bimalka in the in the king's house, uh, they heard about this, what uh, what Rablazar Shimon had said. So Amr they said, which a marshal, Karaina de Igarta, the one who uh, reads the letter, Ihilahava Parvanka, he should be the agent to deliver it. Basically saying that if you really understand this. Then you should be the one who should be enforcing this. So a steward of Elizabeth Shimon, they brought Elizabeth Shimon, but Kotavas Kamivasal, and he was now the detective. He was the guy.
guy was catching the thieves. The Shalchi Bishum and Karchi Bishum and Karchi sent to him, Chaimitz ben Yayin, vinegar the son of wine, meaning you're a Russia, the son of a tzaddik. Admas, because his, his father obviously was a great Reb Shimon. Admas, until when are you going to give over the people of our God to be killed? You're catching all these Jewish thieves and you're giving them over to the government. So Shalchi sent him, I'm just getting rid of the thorns from the vineyard. These people are, are the Rosham. So Shalchi sent him, let the owner of the vineyard, meaning HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because like the Apostle says in Yishai, Ki kechem Hashem tzavok is beis Yisrael, the Jewish people is the vineyard of Hashem. Let him, Michal, as kaitzav, let him get rid of, of his thorns of the vineyard. You shouldn't be the one of uh, catching all these uh, mobsters and all the Jewish families, these uh, 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 lanky, lanky, all these guys. So, Yom Echad Pagabe Bahu Kaibis. One day, uh, Rebbe Lozab Hashem encountered a certain launderer. Maybe that's where he kept the laundering money. Who knows? But some launderer. And Kari Yechavetz Ben Yain. And the launderer called... He heard that, ter- that, that offensive terminology called on the detective. And he called Rebbe Shimon, vinegar the son of wine. So I said, the chutz of Kuli Hai. And the fact this guy is such a chutz of, sounds like my Rebbe from younger, Azam a chutz of, chutz of Kuli Hai. Shmam Narishuhu, obviously he's a wicked person. Amu Tafsu said, catch him, take him and lock him up. So Tafsu, they put him in jail. He says, from the fact that he speaks like this, must be a Russian. Labasa did not die after that he calmed down. Also, Basri Lafruki, he went, Rebbe Lozab Hashem went to go redeem this launderer. Loi Matzi wasn't able to. Karele, he called on that launderer, Pazik Mishli. Shem Epipola Shainai. If you watch your mouth and your tongue, Shem Epipola Snafsha, you save yourself in the difficulties of your soul. Askenet, as I'm a chitziv, so you deserve it now. If you speak like that, look what trouble you're in right now. So it's like, food. they actually hung the launderer. So come, Rebbe Lozab stood, Tutte de Zakifi, beneath the, 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 the wood. Bukabachi was crying that now because of him, this, this, this launderer was hung. So I'm they said to him, Rebbe, our teacher, there shouldn't be bad in your eyes. Because him and his son, they cohabited with an engaged girl on Yom Kippurim, which the death penalty is skila, and whoever gets stoned gets hung. So therefore, it's appropriate. So he put his hands on his belly, and he said, Sisu bonai moe sisu. My intestines rejoice, rejoice. Why? What does that mean? Which is a person who has the gut instinct. That's where the, really the terminology comes. It's really his gut. He put his hands on his gut, on his belly. And he says, If your doubts are like this, meaning he didn't know this guy was a Russia. He says, You spoke like this already. I'm starting to feel already some bad vibes from you. So, and he was right. So, so your definitive. When, there's, when, when I have a good reasoning, for example, like the guys who are dozing off at the eatery at, 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 at that brunch hour, Allah has come become all the more so, I'm confident regarding you, that no worms and no maggots will dominate over you, meaning there's, you, 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 you're totally um, spiritual in that regard. But he still wasn't calm about what happened. When I say he had a guy that was executed, so he wanted to be confident that his body was also spiritual. So this is also obviously some type of a, a, a general anesthesia. So they, they gave him some of this um, potion to sleep. And they put him into a marble house. Obviously, like we know that the, uh, the, the room, the way they do surgeries has to be, everything has to be where there's no other elements that could get in. And they tore open his belly. They took out from him the kuli, the kuli, the tarba, basketfuls of fat, because he was a very heavy set uh, person. And they put it into the sun in the months of Thomas and Avwin, it's really hot outside, to test if it's going to putrefy and if it's going to get wormy. And it didn't putrefy. Says the what do we call tarba in Amalis All fats don't putrefy, only if it has meat with it. Says the you're right, call tarba all fats don't putrefy, but should I kisumki? But there's these red strips, which are pieces of meat that are inside the fat. Although I had these red strips, it didn't, it didn't putrefy. So Kari Nafshi called himself a pasuk and told him, Even my flesh will dwell in confidence that even his, 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 his body uh, has, uh, doesn't have any uh, flaws in it. And another big tzaddik, Mata as Gitin Taba Pedam he also had a similar story 
where the king appointed him to catch thieves uh, and the robbers. And Pogim Elio, Omalei, so Elio encountered him and he said to him, Ad the Moisa, Amashel, the king, Lerigo, up until when are you going to give over the people of our God to be executed? Amalei says, My Abba, what should I do? Harman the Malku, this is a, a command of the king. Amalei said to him, Avuch Ark La Asi, your father ran away to Asia. At Ark Ludkiyu, you should run away to Ludkiyu, and therefore that's not an excuse. You should also run away to thank you to any time for hosting us.